All right, we are live. Awesome. And one minute late, which is right on time for us. Thanks for watching uh, <laughs> tonight. For we us. are the, the QB show. Myself, Woody Adams, Don Brown, Saves Killed All. They'll all be on chiming in. Happy to have you. It's a very exciting show uh, for me because we have a special guest coming on later that I'll do a, an introduction for, and she's going to dive down into bank feeds and QBO, and not just the normal stuff. Uh, she's going to be able to show some really cool uh, stuff, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, and the QB Show comes live to you every Tuesday, right? But you can always watch it on, on YouTube or go to thequbshow.com. Yep. You can watch all the archives there. We usually have a guest, and tonight we do. But typically it's myself, and I've been with Intuit now for 10 years. That's 10 what, years! We're gonna, That's uh, a big deal! To Stacey and Don for celebrating. That's cool. They're going to show some of their... Some of their uh, where the ten year where they have right. We've got official into a ten. I do not. Uh, I just have the official uh, ten year banner, uh, and Dawn has the official um, into it uh, ten year show. So if you want to show your shirt, there you go. Am I showing my shirt? Yeah, there you go. Looks I made good. Woody, Woody's Woody's tenth. Congrats. You can't probably read it because I had to write it. Um, with a marker, That's and awesome. I was supposed to also make a shirt, but I unfortunately you made did a not banner have time. with Kira. Look at that! That there is you go. awesome. Do, what, That's got a banner. Time. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. That is sweet. I wrote on my uh, mug. Yep. That's so. Th thanks for for celebrating. Um, and uh, though I do work for Intuit, uh, the Intuit's not affiliated with the show, and anything I do say. Uh, on the shows doesn't reflect the opinion statements views of Intuit, so just wanted to get that out of the way. But so, Stacy, how are you doing tonight? You know, I'm doing really well. Uh, launched the new website, launched the new Killed All Services. Yeah, I love ago. that thing. And uh, it turned out so much better than I ever even imagined. Uh, Jen Puckett from Puckett Creative Design. Uh, she's the one who's pretty much designed. We love Puckett. Uh, her and Laura Wooten really. Uh, it, I just kind of told them what I what I wanted. I said I, I wanted it. This is what I told them. Would it be? Can you guys make it look like the QBO homepage? And they nailed okay. it. So it's very. I'm not. I mean, obviously, if you know me and you've ever logged into QBO, you know that it looks a lot. It's very very similar. So uh, they just they did such an amazing great job, and I just want to. Um, thank them for that. And now we're working, we're redoing uh, StacyK.net, and uh, we are counting down until the official launch of uh, Stacy K Academy, is what it's going to be called. Um, so you're going to have two two different sites. I have for a while. So like Killed All Services has really been specific to the bookkeeping and kind right. of catering to small businesses and those kind of clients. Where Stacy K is, where my blog is. And it's really going to be a place for, um, I've been doing a lot of consulting work with other pro-advisors, and that, this is what this training program uh, that I'm it just finishing up developing and about to, you know, we're getting ready to launch the page and do all that stuff. Um, that's going to be kicking off, and it's uh, also targeting uh, pro-advisors, because I have a lot of pro-advisors saying, hey, how do you, how do we, we, how do we do what you do? And so I've been getting the same questions over and over again. So I just decided to do uh, like a like a training program. So that's what's that going awesome. on here. Yeah, on. I really like it. It's a very uh, new modern site. Really yeah. easy to find stuff. It's kind of the modern colors. You know, I, I just it's really cool. Yeah, Puckett just um, kicked its ass. I mean, she just yeah. she did an amazing job. I'm so so happy with it. Yeah, if I can ever get some investment dollars, I want to update the the video site to be to be like that. Um, I'm sure we can make really that cool. happen. We'll see, yeah. Um, oh, and to go to Nerf, for you guys, because we have some announcements, I think you go to nerf.com and then you search for uh, Pound QB Show Live, I believe. Is that correct? Yep, you're just going to go to nerf.com and then you if you just type in Nerf. QB Show Live, you know, slash nerf.com, log in with your Twitter account, um, and then uh, go to QB Show Live, it, that you'll find it. Right, exactly, I'm going there right now. And then very quickly, we, uh, we have oh, some yeah. sponsors that we want to talk about. That is awesome. Um, QB Baron has a sweet shirt. Right. That is great. Nice. Oh, that is awesome. So everybody's got uh -huh. their shirts on. Um, so, and that's the other thing, too. Um, I'll mention that, and then we'll get into sponsors, is we're doing a contest, and if you participate in the live tweet, we just kind of, I just go as the show is happening, 
uh, and usually maybe a little bit after the next day, I look for our hashtag, which is QB Show Live, and I take a couple days. So you don't have to listen live, you don't have to be participating live, but it helps. Um, and I pick four, five, six people, however many, and then I let you know that you are a winner, and then I send you a shirt. And if you wear the shirt to Scaling New Heights, you and you are spotted, and you're given a little card. On the back will be a logo of one of our sponsors. If you go to their booth, they will give you some special swag that is not available to anybody else except for QB Show, the people who are wearing the QB Show uh, shirt. So, nice. and a, that's a good segue into sponsors. Yes, and um, unless Don has anything to share, I think she or something like that. Sh I think she may. Come back. That, yeah, Don, how are you doing? I had to get my umbrella again. Yeah, are you outside? No. No. Nope. Nope. Oh, yeah. There you go. This is for you, Woody. Umbrella. This is for you. No, it's an Intuit umbrella. Actually. Oh, that, I got it. Stand by. Got it. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there you go. go. I didn't nice. want to run on this, plus I didn't have a white marker. <laughs> right? <laughs> we got those umbrellas as they came out of the box. Do you remember that? Well, Oh, yeah. Hey, Don, what's the week after tax season like? Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. Why is it not? You're always so... Cat. There's a cat. Yep. Cat. Friend. You know why? Because you put people off as long as you can, and they pretend like they will leave you alone for two weeks before the taxes are done, and then right. they are like, oh, hey, it's 12.15 a.m. on Thursday morning the 16th. Can you please send me blah, blah, blah? And they're not, they're not, they're not wonderful, like Woody, <laughs> like Woody's they're not, anniversary. They're not, they're not understanding you on a little time between. They don't care. They don't care. And you know I what? Know, I know. I'm I know. dumber. <laughs> so you know what? You want to pay me to be dumber? I mean, give me two weeks and I'm smart. But two weeks, dumb. That's <laughs> good. I'll bill you for it. Trust me. That's all. <laughs> That's so I'll bill you. <laughs> What do you like stuff. your background there with the I like the uh, Yeah, this is the uh where I'm sitting in the kitchen a little uh nook. It's a breakfast nook, I guess, is what you call and we got these shutters and it looks out over the uh, the park. Yeah. It's like okay. Maine, bud. Yeah, once we get everything settled, uh maybe I can walk around uh you know, a couple of weeks so when it's nice out with my webcam and just kind of show the house. Why not? Be okay. Be outside. Um but awesome. So Valerie's going to be in eventually, and, and we are going to go over. Uh, oh, I already gave away the name. Yeah, I'll introduce Valerie Heckman because I don't know how many people. Uh, Is that straight? How many know Valerie? But more and more are going to know her. That's all I know. Um, so we're excited to have her on. But I think she's she's um, people are recognizing her name, but she's going to be on tonight talking about bank feeds eventually. Um, Stacy sponsors. We should do that quick. Yes, please. All right, so we'd like to thank, of course, Avalara, avalara.com, and they do sales tax and sales tax everything, really. It hooks up the desktop and QuickBooks Online. Um, you know, all the different tracking you need, Nexus, et cetera, wherever you sell it at by zip code, it'll calculate the correct rates and, of course, all the forms. So avalara.com, Avatax, as we, we all know it, and they, they're probably one of the oldest integrators with, with QuickBooks, period. And then T-Sheets, T-Sheets.com, I was actually in there today. I was tracking how much time um, that I was playing with different apps today. So I just I had a bunch of different tabs open with my QBO file, and T-Sheets was one of them, so I just kind of had my clock going. Of course, uh, time tracking, GPS tracking for that as well. You can clock in and out on the phone. There's good reports, and it's a real easy sync over to QuickBooks Online. Yes. And there's even approval process. We, we don't talk about that much, but there's an approval process, right? So I know QBO and desktop have a time tracking feature, but there's no approval process, among many other things. Um, and then, of course, Fundera, Fundera.com, and then that's for when you're trying to get a loan. I, I hooked it up to a file recently. Stacey and Don actually use it for a real-life loan. Uh, they were trying to get funded, obviously, Fundera, um, and I was able to see all my options in about 10 minutes. Uh, I had eight different uh, banks that I could go ahead and hit up for a loan. So love that. Fundera.com hooks up with QuickBooks Online. And, of course, the, uh, our oldest sponsor we'd like to uh, shout out to, Unidata, unidataIT.com. But really, the, i got to just stop saying that URL 
Yeah. I'm going to actually delete it from the doc right now. It's actually skylinecloudservices.com, but I think we still call them Unidata, right? Do we still call them Unidata? We call them Skyline. I, I, I call them Unidata, and I can't not. It's well, I know. It's because of what we've known, but uh, skylinecloudservices.com. And then, of course, our newest sponsor, QVinci, QVinci.com. We actually had Charles Nagel, the CEO, on last week. And um, I, I think I did go in and demo. If not, if we have time tonight, we can. I love QVinci. It's charts and graphs. It's pulling data out of QBO, QuickBooks, Excel, and you can make consolidated reports. Our franchise department uses it. Uh, the reseller team uses it a lot, consolidated reporting. But also just for uh, you don't have to have multiple entities to use it, right? So right. it's dashboards, KPI. Peer industry metrics and, and differentiation. It's it's awesome. QVinci. It's really easy to set up and use. And we'd like to thank our five sponsors uh, for their sponsorship. It is awesome. Yeah. So yeah. that's that. Um, and so Stacy went over Nerf Chat. We went over the contest. Valerie's going to be on soon. Um, does, is she here now, or, or do you want to just? Is she coming on the top of the hour? So we can go into yeah. questions. Um, like. No, I told her to come in and at about 7:45. So okay. Well, you do know. you want to go? Do you want to do this first question, Stace? What um, is it? Because I don't have it open at all. I have the doc. No, open. I don't think you have to go into product. I think it's um, how do I see transactions older than three months on the transactions banking page? So you can, okay? So this is I know what this question is. There's cat right there. Um, yeah, they converted to QBO. They they had been in business over six months. I was able to import all my old banking transactions and can see those in the account register. Um, and then the matching, etc. Is there a way? To link the already downloaded older than six months transactions. No, so not through the bank. Usually, bank feeds are the banks only will allow you through QBO to download the 90 days. So, um, if you need more than that, what you'll have to do is probably download uh, a QBO a dot QBO file or uh, an ex, like an, a CSV file. Yeah. Um, and then import that manually into QBO. But usually when you connect the bank, the bank feed won't, most banks won't let you do uh, more than the 90 days. So you're going to have to do it manually to get more than 90 days. Sorry. Yeah, and, and it's funny. Um, I'm going to have, that. hopefully Valerie will speak to it because she just did like a, brought in an Excel file for like a bunch of different transactions for a long time period and how, how slick it is on setup. So. You know, nice. you can connect the bank maybe and not download, just upload the file, right, and then just start the automatic download if you want to control the length of time you're bringing in, if you, basically if you want to go over, over 90 days. Um, and I think when you connect to a bank, you can actually, you're given a couple choices up to 90 days, you know, that you want to bring in. But that, that'll be exciting too, so thank you, Stacey, for um, answering that. And... Um, well, I'll show that at the end of the show because then I have to share out. Um, oh, Don, here's a quick one. Is there yeah. a way to add the job type field? So we're in desktop. Job type, you know, it's it's like the uh, company oh, yeah. vendor and profile list or, or, or customer. Yeah, that, that sub list, if you will. A bunch of different lists there you can use. Is there a way to add that job type field to a sales order in Premier or Enterprise? Well, hmm, maybe. Good question. You have to go to the template and check it out. No, you, you can't. I tried. You can or can't? Cannot. I couldn't find a way. There's no job type as an option so, at all. I guess my question would be, can they just use a defined field, which oh. is not, which which in Pro and Premiere is not like awesome. Enterprise, it's awesome because you can do the drop down, but you still oh yeah the drop down list and the date range list. That's right. But if you if you if you want to filter the report, typically you have to have the perfect text. But you can if you at least have a drop down, you have control over the te over the drop down, the text in the drop down. Yes. Um just trying to think about how that works. But I also is question. You can have your you can I tried. Oh hey Val. Val, you got to turn your uh, speaker down. Sorry about that. That's all right. Just just turn it down a little bit, or or if you want to use your uh, earbuds or something, that'll work too. I realized I had the show playing on my yeah. other screen, and then really I turned delayed. on this one. So sorry about that. No, that's awesome. Uh, her 
Yeah, that's great. So we want, is that okay, Don? We'll just go right to Valerie. I love her. I want her to okay. pull her hair with a fork, for goodness sake. <laughs> well, well, I didn't bring the, my thingamabob tonight. Let me do the cool introduction because though a lot of people know who, who Valerie Heckman is, uh, maybe there's some that do not. So Valerie is a product specialist with Intuit now. She's been with Intuit for a long time. I'll let her tell her story, what she was doing before that. But specifically for the uh, business development team and the national business development team, so supporting the top 100 firms. Um, and she's uh, awesome at, at what she does uh, with QBO and, and just has tons of passion and very excited to have her on the team. And uh, I, t I told her a, a few months ago that she would soon eclipse me uh, in, the, in the role. So we're, that's coming on pretty soon. But uh, she's a colleague, really love working with her, so I'd like to introduce Valerie Heckman to the QB Show live audience. Valerie, thanks for taking the time out of your night. I know you had a big day and, and for coming on the show. How's it going there? Thank you for having me. I, uh, I'm i missing Stanley Cup uh, playoffs right now. So <laughs> I know. I, I know. really this, but, but this is worth it. I'm, I'm really glad to be here, but you will see uh, in addition to repping T-Sheets, I've got, I've got Blackhawks. Oh, no, Black no, no, no. So I've, I've of got course. Everything Are you a long today. time Nope. So yeah, so explain, nope. introduce yourself to the audience and you know, where you're from, obviously you're in the Chicago area and, and kind of what you do. You're what a you Hawks did. fan? I think I need to reevaluate our relationship. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, are, you, are you a Red Wings fan? Um, oh no. Yeah, kind yeah, of. I mean, it makes sense where you are, but still. I live like right here. I can't. <laughs> it's like against the law to not be a Wings fan. Well, it's it's that with with Illinois too. I'm you know. I know. Forty miles outside of Chicago, so it makes sense. <sighs> Thirty miles, I guess now. <laughs> um, so yeah. So in it, in addition to that, I uh, I've been with Intuit about three years now. Um, as as Woody introduced, I'm a product specialist with the top hundred accounting firms. So I specialize in helping accountants move their clients to the cloud and move their practices to the cloud. Um, and uh, in addition to that, I, uh, I have a background in online payroll. So that's how I started it into it. So I've got a lot of experience there. Nice. Okay. And that is Pretty awesome. Well, well, thanks for, uh, for taking your time out tonight again to come on the show. And I, I forgot, yes, you would be a, a Blackhawks fan. That's great. Um, exciting. Sorry to pull you away from that, but hopefully the no, that's okay. those games are usually pretty long, so I'm sure you can catch at least the third period or second period or something like that. So Absolutely. you were going to um, kind of deep dive us on bank feeds, um, which, which we've done before, but you said that you had, you know, from traveling to firms, presenting and stuff, different stuff coming up, there's some interesting things you found out about it, and just whatever you feel like showing about it would be great. So if, if you want to share out, um, I'll... Uh, put myself on mute and you can just take over and just let us know. Sounds good. All right, let me figure this out here for sharing my monitor. Yeah, it's usually the green thing and then when you share, you you choose it, you click share and then you'll see this now, little thing at the bottom. Now do I have to pick bottom. a specific, okay, I can pick a specific screen. That's good, cool. So I'm going to oh. drag things around a little bit here. Okay, so now, let's see. Am I sharing the sample yeah, company or am I sharing great. Woody? I see the sample file. Okay, excellent. Wanted to make sure I'm sharing the right thing here. Okay, so, um, yeah, I wanted to sort of deep dive into bank feeds tonight because I feel like we, oftentimes when we show it, we don't have a lot of time to talk about it. I could talk about QuickBooks Online for eight hours if you wanted me to, and bank feeds I could probably spend all day with, but I'm going to try and keep this pretty uh, succinct and uh, not take up the entire show, but um, yeah, let's do it. So, give me just a second. I'm going to minimize. Got to get used to the feed. So, can you see me and my screen or just my screen? I'm curious. Just your screen. You're okay, good. Okay, cool. New to, to Google Hangouts a little bit. So you're kicking off. Um, so yeah, so I'm in the sample company. If you want to go into the sample company when you're watching at home, you can Google QBO test drive. It's the first result that comes up. Um, or if you're in uh, QBOA, it's under the gear menu in the main page. But that's kind of the easiest way to jump into it. Um, I like doing things in here because I know that both you can try it at home 
and uh, and also it's got a bank account already connected that's not my own bank. So I don't want Don Brolin to know all my financial information. You know, it's nothing personal. But <laughs> well, that's listen. I can always get you a job. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, <laughs> all right, this is going to be fun. I'm excited. So um, to get into to banking, you can either go through the bank accounts up here or it's under transactions and banking. And I'm going to start off by first kind of showing um, adding a new account. And uh, I've got some screenshots to share when I don't actually have stuff to fill in here. But when you first come in here, the first thing it's going to ask you to do is see if you want to add an account or do a file upload. And I am going to show file upload as well. Um, and so under add account, pretty straightforward, but there's a couple of tricks to this. Um, you can choose by the bank and you know jump into Wells Fargo, Chase, what have you. But the best thing to do is really to search by the web address that you use for your bank to get the most accurate results. Um, the reason for this is some banks have kind of a lot of different ways that you can access your accounts. So for example, Wells Fargo is one that when I search, there's 11 different results that come up. Um, the main one, wellsfargo.com, and I would use my user ID and password, but if I jumped into Wells Fargo Financial, it's a totally different link and they ask for more information. So if you're ever having trouble connecting, you might be kind of choosing the wrong account from that list. So that's a kind of quick tip, uh, if you will. Um, there's, in addition to regular bank accounts, you can connect up a lot of different credit cards, you can search for your different financial institutions, and um, one thing that came up recently you can search for gift cards and prepaid cards, like prepaid debit cards and stuff in here too. So there's not a whole lot of it, but when you search, they do come up and there's a few pages of results. Uh, gift cards, there's very few, but it is something that you can connect up if you want to bring those types of transactions in. Um, if a bank isn't on the list, you've got a, a small mom pa bank in the middle of nowhere or something, you can do a request, put in the URL, the bank name, and your email address, and if we end up forming a connection with them, we'll email you when we do. Pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to show that actual bank connection, but I am going to bounce some screenshots up here to show it. Um, let me do this as a presentation. So I would put in, I'm going to use Chase because that's what I have, uh, my user ID and password. Then it's going to take a few moments to connect up to the bank. Don't panic if it takes a few minutes. It's going through a lot of different security checks across everything. And uh, then it kind of tells me which accounts it found with that. So if you've got more than one account at that bank, it's going to show it. It'll show the last four digits of your account numbers, too. And you're going to pick which account in your chart of accounts you want to connect this up to. Um, the biggest decision to make on this page is what date range you want to bring in. So the default is 90. But if you need a shorter date range, you can click on that and do either 0, 7, 30, or 90. Uh, a lot of people ask me, how do I decide what to do? Well, I always base it off of the last time you reconciled um, because we're not going to try and match up to transactions that have already been reconciled. So if you just did it, you know that everything is in QuickBooks Online and totally accounted for, you can say zero days and then just have it connect going forward. Awesome. Um, so then it's going to, again, communicate with the bank and let you know that it's downloaded your transactions, and hooray. And then we get into the main page where we have things connected. So let's take a look at what's kind of going on on this page. Um, along the top, we have the different accounts that we connected up, so checking savings, and then I've got a credit card. I can toggle between these, and it'll bring the transactions for each down, um, and we call these cards at Intuit, they're the, the cards for the different accounts. Um, so we'll show the balance from the bank itself, what's going on with that account in the chart of accounts in QuickBooks. So you got, you know, what, what's in your books versus what's happening at the bank, and hopefully when we're at the end of this, we'll almost match with that, but there might be some reasons it doesn't, and we'll talk about those. Um, it's going to show the last time that new information came in. 
So in this case, it was moments ago, but if you're if you've been connected for a while and you see this, and you say, "Hey, you know that date isn't showing today," uh, that might be because there's nothing new going on at the bank. So that's going to be the last time new information came in. So if I haven't bought anything in several days or whatever, um, that might not be an up-to-date number. Um, and then the number of transactions that haven't been accepted or matched in QuickBooks. Uh, I can hide this if I want to to get myself more real estate and I can toggle between them from this list. So if you've got a big long list, this is probably going to be easier for you to use. Um, if I want to manually update, I can click here. So if I know some new stuff has posted at the bank, I can run an update on it and it'll tell me the last time that it updated as well. Um, before we get into this, I wanted to talk quickly about that file upload. So yeah. under the same menu as the update, I've got an option for file upload. And this is if you want to bring in um, either a different time period than 90 days, so more transactions than that, or if you want to bring in a specific period. So say I'm like, I want to bring in March 15th through April 15th or something, you know, a very specific time frame. Or if my bank doesn't connect up, I can bring in these files if I'm able to get a CSV file or if you QFX file from my bank. So if for whatever reason it doesn't connect. Um, and then the rare instance that we hope doesn't happen to you is if there's something going on and that connection is, is broken or it has errors, we might have you, you know, bring it in this way in the meantime until that gets fixed. But knock on wood that that doesn't happen. Um, and I'm going to show this flow as well. So let me jump back into my PowerPoint. And let me know if I'm going too fast. I know that no, I tend to talk great. fast. No, this is great. Yeah, great. And I'm really glad you show the, uh, you know, connecting to a bank. You know, those, that's really, it kind of demystifies, you know, the process. And I had no idea we call them cards. I <laughs> did. I did actually know that. Term. I remember, I remembered somebody hearing that. But what I love is uh, you saying to put in the the link, the website link. Like that's awesome. I never even would have thought of that. Yeah, it makes a big difference, and especially if someone's having problems connecting and they're going, "Why won't it connect? Why won't it connect?" It keeps saying my my user ID and password are wrong, and I I know that it is. I just say, "Hey, you know, go to the bank site and steal the the URL that you use there." and see if it, if it finds something with that. So that tends to, to work really well, uh, especially those big banks that have tons of different websites and different types of accounts and stuff. Um, but for file upload, so if you're coming in totally blank, and can you still see my screen? Yep. Making sure. OK, cool. Um, you'll have this option, add an account, or do a file upload when you first come in, or from that dropdown I showed. And uh, again, it's going to tell you, Go to your bank's website and get this file. Um, every bank hides this in a different spot. Um, Chase, for personal accounts, I don't know what they do for business accounts, but for personal accounts, it's under products and services, and it's download activity. Um, so like I said, every bank puts this in a different area, but you'll want to look for anything that talks about downloading a file for your financial management software. Some of them actually will call out QuickBooks, like right from here but it really kind of depends on the bank and, and what they say. Uh, but look for download activity or download to PFM software. And then if you're on Chase, the next page kind of gives a couple of options. They've got something complicated that's direct access. That's not what you're looking for. You're looking for a free file to download activity to your desktop and import it into another program. Um, and here it calls out Quicken or QuickBooks into it products, right? Uh, and then the next page, I get to choose my um, account and then the date range and what type of file I want to bring in. The preferred one for QuickBooks Online is a WebConnect QBO. If you don't have that, if that's not something your bank offers, um, they might have QFX. Or as kind of a last resort, you could do CSV. The reason I say last resort is because there's a little bit more work, but I'm going to show you how much that involves because it's really not that bad. So I took a CSV file from my bank, found it on my computer, brought it in, and again it's going to ask me which uh, account for my chart of accounts I want to match it up to. And then with a CSV file, this is the most work you're going to have to do with it. It's going to ask you to take 
the file, open it in Excel or whatever spreadsheet program, and match up the columns. So pretty straightforward. Got a column for the date, column for the description, and then the amounts. Um, you'll either have one column with positive and negative numbers, or some of the banks separate them out. So Chase keeps them all together. Uh, so I, I just kind of have to map this and uh, tell them what's going on. Pretty easy, right? Yeah. And then um, I'm going to choose the transactions to import. So it's going to give me a big long list of everything from that time period. The reason that we give you an option before you just bring everything in is occasionally people just want to upload their, um, their money in or their money out. Sometimes they don't want to do both. So you can see where if they're doing like the whole year and they only want to bring in expenses, they might choose just those transactions and leave any of their you know, income off of it. And then voila, it uploads into QuickBooks. And then nice. it looks exactly the same as it does when you connected. So down along the bottom, you're going to have all the transactions that it found for that account, either through connected or an upload. Um, and there's a couple of different things going on here as well. So you got your new transactions and your in QuickBooks. So as we add or match things, they're going to go into this folder. We haven't done anything yet, or this tab, I guess. Uh, and then excluded. So we'll talk more about those in a moment. But um, yeah, we've got all of our transactions. You can tell there's a lot going on. So what QuickBooks is going to do is take the bank data, clean up the bank descriptions. So a lot of the times when you're looking at them on your statements or whatever, the description's really cryptic or really weird. It's going to clean that up for you. Um, it's going to suggest sort of logical categories based off of what it knows about that description. Um, it's going to remember what you've done in the past. So the first time you connect it, it's only going to look for matches, but as you go forward, it's going to kind of learn what you've done and make adjustments to that. And uh, again, look for matches. Um, so transactions that are already in QuickBooks, it's going to try and match things up. And you'll see some of them are green and some of them are gray. The green ones, it's only found one possible match. The gray ones, it's found more than one. So it kind of gives you that option. But we'll talk a little bit more about the matching in a second. Um, and then the, the last thing it's going to do is look for rules that you created. And we'll be talking about creating rules as well. Nice. Um, I love the rules. I've just rules started. are awesome. Rules are my favorite. I'm saving them for last because they're fantastic. They're really um, super fabulous, and I actually just started using them like a couple. I mean, they've been out forever, and I just really started getting into them the last couple weeks. I awesome, awesome. Yeah, I feel like they're kind of sort of a secret thing, so I'm hoping that tonight we'll have some people that have an aha moment with rules. Um, so personally, before I get started with the matching and the adding in here, um, I like to do a couple of different things. First off, I like to duplicate my tab and then open up the register that I'm working with. And I can do that right from go to register. And then I usually put that on my other monitor. So if I'm using Google Chrome, I can actually pick up this tab and drag and drop it. So some people do this. They keep the register open while they're working. Others don't. I like it because I, I can use it as a reference as I'm going through and um, make sure that I'm not creating any duplicates as I'm going you know, through all the transactions. And I'll talk a lot about you know, what can kind of cause things to not match in a moment. Um, and then I can kind of set up how I want to look at this. So we've got a gear icon. If you're a QBO user, you know this exists throughout the product. Um, I can add my check number. I can um, remove the payee column if I, if I don't want to look at that. And then within the individual things that I'm adding in, I can say if I want to show a date field. Um, this is useful if you're adding transactions in and you don't want to put the date that it posted at the bank. You want to put the date that the transaction actually happened, um, you know, because sometimes things can take a few days to clear the bank. So if you want to do that, you can. Um, and then you can also have it copy the bank description into the memo field when it adds it in. But really, my favorite setting in here is um, making it compact. So it kind of skinnies uh, it up, like wide rules. Yeah. Like everything. Rule. Love compact. 
I want them to do that with everything. Chart of account, every list, like everything I want to be able to make it compact. Yes. Right? I, I, I mean, I guess it. some people have a different way of doing things and they want to see it spread out, but I, I personally like having as much as I can see on a page at yes. any given time. Me too. <laughs> no, I don't think... I don't think anybody wants to see a bulbous like a smart car. Let's go compact. <laughs> compact. Different, different strokes for different folks, I guess. But uh, yeah, when uh, when we're looking at this, we can have everything kind of on the page, um, and I can sort by columns. I personally like to sort it ascending with date because that matches my register. So my date has the the last thing first um, in the register, and I can do that in here as well, right? Um, and then starting with what has been recognized. So we can look at all or we can look at recognized. So I like to address these first and kind of get them out of the way. Um, so for any given transaction, we've got the option to add, match, or transfer. Um, and matching is, is sort of you know, going to be indicated here. This is the transaction in QuickBooks that you've already put in that our banking feed wants to match it up to. If you want to take a look at this, if you click on it, it's just going to drop down. I'm going to do that little nice uh, drop down. You can check on it, say, hey, that's good. I'm going to match it. Um, you could also kind of look at this and compare it against what's going on in your register, which is what I like to do. Say, okay, yeah, this is all here. Um, I can select all of these and do a batch action to accept them, which will match them. Um, if I only want to do a handful of them at a time, I can check one, oops, check one and hold down my shift key and that'll grab a whole bunch at once as you're going through. Oh, kind of shift little key. Known that's, fact a, in QBO. that's cool. That's a cool tip. <laughs> what was it? Wait, wait, wait. I was giggling. What did I miss? Sure. So I can click this, hit shift, and grab a whole bunch all at once. Oh, Instead yeah. Of selecting all, I can kind of just grab a whole bunch of things at once. Um, so or select all or unselect is, is up here. So I'm going to just assume that I've gone through and all these things are great, they look good, they're matches, um, and I grabbed them. And sometimes after I do that, it's smart and it realizes, okay, well, if you matched that one, that means that this other one is also a match. Um, so it kind of did a process of elimination for one of those that had two possible matches. So I can grab that and accept it. And then it realized that I just matched two transactions from Books by Bessie. They were both legal and professional fees. And so it's recognizing that, hey, maybe this is also legal and professional fees. Um, and I can take a look at it and say yes or no with that, decide to add it in based off of, of that. Um, so then when I go back to new transactions and into all, I've only got 10 left to work with. Um, and I'm going to address this first match and say, OK, yep that's definitely it and match it up. Um, and so now let's talk a little bit about things that it, uh, reasons it might not match. So to sort of review what it matches up with because we've made some updates with this. So originally it would only like way back when we first started doing this it really only matched up with um, things that you already had in QuickBooks that were either like payments or uh, undeposited funds, I think. There wasn't really um, like a full range of things that we would match up to. But now, nowadays, in, in uh, the updated QuickBooks Online world, in addition to matching up to, uh, like for bank deposits and credits, uh, it'll match up to payments received against invoices, sales receipts, deposits, uh, journal entries, or any sort of um, positive or credit transactions that you made in QuickBooks and also open invoices. So if you've got a, an invoice that's out there that's open and this is a payment against it, it'll try and match that up as well. Um, so it didn't used to do that. And then with bank withdrawals and debits, it'll match to payments, expenses, um, journal entries that are negative or debit transactions, and open bills. So a lot more uh, capability with matching everything up. Hi. So Shannon, or not, sorry, not Shannon. I was just reading an email from someone named Shannon. That's my partner, <laughs> Shannon, my business partner. No um, problem. So we, have, we have someone uh, uh, in the chat who is wondering if 
you could at some point, or if you were going to show how to, to delete um, if there's duplicates, if something has been matched. Um, where's the question? Hold on one second. There's something specific. Um, address how to delete transactions when you have a duplicate. So maybe it was added and or something in it and it's now a duplicate or maybe oh, sure. somehow Absolutely. it was downloaded twice. If you could. I'll, I'll jump into that this. right now. What, why not? Um, so if I go into in QuickBooks, I'm going to see everything that I've added and matched so far and I can simply undo and it'll put it on the on the new transactions again, um, or I can cl click you know a bunch of them from here and do an undo for a batch. But if I undo it and it puts it back on this list, um, I can instead of doing a match for it, I can check it off and exclude selected. And that basically anything that I exclude goes into this holding cell over here. <laughs> I like to refer to it as oh, um, like it's not posted in QuickBooks. It's it's just in this excluded um, area. So anytime I run into duplicates, or um, it, one use that people have for this is if they've got something that they're really not sure what to do with, and they want to ask their accountant about it, they might put it in excluded for now and then come back to it later. Valerie, so I, I also had another question. Could you not? I mean. Some people are, are weird about the excluded tab, so I, I just suggest if you have if that duplicate in that's in the register isn't cleared, can you not just delete it from there, and then just add it from the online banking to the register? I mean, oh yeah, you could do it. that instead yeah. too. Yeah. So you could totally pull your register over. Where did I put my register over here? Um, and then just find that whatever it is and delete it out of here. You know. Um, and that'll it'll tell you if it's connected to other things and can't be deleted. But for the most part, yeah, if it's not cleared and you just would rather use the one from online banking, absolutely, you could totally grab that. And well, I've got the register up actually. Um, if I refresh this, so I said I've you know kind of been comparing things as I go through. If I refresh my register, um, anything that I've added or matched already is going to show up as cleared. And it's yeah. going to show this little green icon that it is an online banking transaction. So the One whole point of doing this really is to make sure that what's happening in QuickBooks Online and happening at the bank, Jive, you know, real life versus QuickBooks Online world. Um, and so, you know, once you've kind of gone through and done this, you've done that first leg of reconciliation. You've got those transactions totally cleared out. And when you go into reconcile, you already know that they're on the bank statement because you've seen them come through on the bank feed. So I want to make just a couple comments and one is um, when, like let's say you've already reconciled the bank and you have a client who downloads a transaction and adds it. Uh, you can't just delete the transaction. I do want to make a note first and I, I don't know if you mentioned this but first you have to unmatch it from the bank feed and then right. you have to delete the transaction. Um, and then another question um, that I want to uh, address in the chat is um, somebody is asking how does excluding it affect the accounting process and it doesn't affect it at all. You can't ever get rid of those transactions that have been excluded. They'll always be in that tab that bothers some people a lot. Um, but it doesn't really affect anything. It's not going to hurt anything because they're not being posted anywhere. Um, and then the last question is, um, this is checks that are, and I'll let one of you guys talk, I'll shut up, um, checks that are printed bank feed reads, um, the vendor name and matches, not handwritten checks if it, it defaults to the last check name, right? So I guess I don't really understand what, I apologize, I don't understand what's being asked. It sounds like if it, because it doesn't read the name of the checks, like the hand, the even printed out checks, it just brings in, um, you know, I guess I don't understand. If it's a handwritten check, it's asking. So hopefully oh, I, in if that it, case, it'll check, bring in the check case. number. Hopefully no. in that case, your bank will pick up on the check number. Wait, 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 wait. I understand what they're asking. They're saying, so oh. if it's a handwritten check and not a printed check that's being matched, it's saying it's going to just default the vendor name to the last check that was written in the register. That's the question. I get it. Okay, that's the okay, question. Okay, so let me, let me talk a bit, and I, I know we're running out of time, and I'm sorry. Like I said, I could talk about this all day. 
Um, let me go into some of the reasons that things might not match, and maybe that'll answer some questions. So um, I'm I'm gonna just kind of go through a few of these and talk about reasons that these might not be finding a match in, in QuickBooks Online. So let's say I looked at this and I said, hey, um, you know, I know that these are in my register. What's going on? So I can do find a match and search for this transaction. And like this first one is there. It's, it's 55 bucks. It's there. But um, the reason that it might not match up with QuickBooks, that, so the kind of the first thing is it was recorded as a check but the bank had it as a as an ACH or as a um, you know a, a debit card transaction. Oh, so if somebody good. recorded it as a check instead of as an expense, it might not match up. So I could go back and change the original transaction, or I can just match it up from here. Um, this next one, another reason it might not match, and I'm going to fly through these because I looked at the clock and I really want to talk about rules because they're so awesome. Um, <laughs> oh, you're good. You you can you can go all the way to the bottom of the hour. So just uh, yeah. you know, you're you're fine. You're doing awesome. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, so this this next one, you know, I, I look, I say, hey, there's something for Hicks Hardware in the in the uh, register. What's going on? Um, in this case, the dollar amount is different. So if you don't have an exact dollar amount, it might not think that that's a match. So if I indicate that it is, I've got to make up for that two cents. Um, it gives me the option to resolve the difference by adding a new transaction. In this case, I probably wouldn't want to do that. Maybe if it was a bigger difference and I knew it was like a, a fee or something that was causing the discrepancy, I might add a new transaction in. But in this case, what I'm probably going to do is cancel out of this and then go into my register and find that. Where are you? I could search for the amount and find it if I wanted to, but um, I just saw it. Where did it go? Here we go, 2436. So I might just make an edit right from here because I already have my register open on the other screen and change this. I'll save that, and then when I come back in, refresh this window, now I've got a match. So I can avoid having a duplicate by, by matching that up. That is sweet. <laughs> um, and then, so let's see, so we talked about if it's been reconciled, it won't show up as a match. If the date, oh, if the date's way off, so this next one, I'll just show that real quick. So if I go to find a match, and I know because I'm looking at my register, hey, this is definitely in here, um, but I don't see it on this list. It might be because the date is is not within range. So I could totally just instead, you know, maybe choose today, see this update, and there it is. So in this case, I've got 325 for the bill payment, um, but then I have 311 for the actual transaction at the bank. So if I go and look at this in the register and I open it up, I might look at the transaction history and kind of see what, what happened here and realize that whoever recorded this bill payment put the date that they recorded it as opposed to the date it was actually paid. So, you know, user error or just not, you know, doing that. So I could just manually match it up. So if the dates, if the dates are close, if they're within like a, a week or something, they're going to pull. But if it's a huge difference, like two weeks or ten days or something, um, it might not automatically find a match. So, uh, and then the other thing that people run into sometimes is if they classified the bank account on the original transaction incorrectly, it's not going to match. It's only going to match to the transactions that are in that that register that you're working in. Um, so, I, you know, I can go through and, and see if I find matches for these. Maybe I do, maybe I don't, but I can just kind of mark what they are and add them in if, if I don't have a match in the register. And as I do that, it's going to remember what I've categorized it as. Um, and I'm just going to do a couple of these real quick. Let's just say this is, I don't know, just a purchase. Um, and it's going to kind of remember those transactions the next time something comes up. Um, and I could have added in a payee for those if I wanted to. Um, in addition to that, when I have my options here, um, if I've got class 
turned on, I'll also have a drop down to assign a class to this transaction as I'm going through. I can do splits. So if I've got multiple categories, multiple classes, I can split things out as well. Um, and then there's rules. So I'm going to spend kind of the rest of the time we have left talking about rules because they're totally Ooh. awesome. Yeah. Um, so let's say that a rental is, is somebody. Oh, and one last thing. The payee is optional because if you add in a payee, that's going to show up on your, your vendor list or your customer list you know, from that point going forward. Um, so a lot of times if you're doing expenses on the go, maybe you don't want Dunkin' Donuts to be listed as a vendor in your QuickBooks. Um, so you could leave that payee field blank if you, if you don't want to do that. Um, and then bank transfer is the last option, and I, I didn't have one to do that, but um, this is especially useful for credit card payments. Um, so if you've got, you know, money coming out of the checking account to pay the credit card account, you can mark it as a transfer and then choose the credit card liability as your account to kind of show that money movement. So it's not only limited to transfers of, you know, funds between like a checking and a savings or something. You could use that for credit card payments too. Um, okay, now I'll go into rules. I mean it. <laughs> uh, so let's say that a rental, this $800 was an equipment, if I can spell, an equipment rental. And uh, I've got a sub account for job expenses that's for equipment rental. You'll notice that it now thinks that both of the uh, money that I spent are equipment rental. Maybe that's not actually the case. So it's going to tell you, hey, we're going to do this from now on, and I can edit this to leave it uncategorized or make a custom rule. Now, I might want to leave it uncategorized because maybe it's like, you know, something that every time I shop there, it gets categorized a different way. So like Costco or Walmart, sometimes it's office supplies, sometimes it's capital, sometimes it's, you know, whatever. Um, I might want to leave it uncategorized going forward. But I could also create a custom rule. Um, and so this gives a drop down, and it's sort of already pre-filled out, and I can name it a rental, whoa, if I can type tonight, uh, I'm just going to say a rental rental. Wow. Okay. Hard to talk and type sometimes. <laughs> uh, so this is a, a money out rule, and I can pick which bank account I want it to apply to if I'd like, and then I can set conditions, and we can either have it meet any conditions or all conditions. Um, and then my options are for description, bank text, and amount, and I can add um, up to five different conditions for this. Uh, so what I'm going to say in this example, theoretically, whenever I spend more than $1,000, it's a rental. I know that. I've done a bunch of stuff at a rental, and anytime I spend more than $1,000, it's an equipment rental. I can even assign a payee to it. I could split it out if I wanted to do percentage and dollar amounts um, as well. But let's just say that's my rule, equipment rental. Now it's going to go through and say, okay, this one's more than $1,000. I've got a rule for that, and it's going to leave the one that's less than $1,000 alone. Let's say that I wanted to make another rule for things that are less than $1,000. Um, rules are accessed through this dropdown and manage rules. And this will open up, and it will have all the rules that I've created. Um, I could do a new one and start from scratch, but since I'm just sort of making the same rule, only the opposite. I'm going to do the drop down and copy it. And then I'm going to just change this description to be a rental. And let's say that when it's less than $1,000, it's repairs. My imaginary world. Um, so then I'm going, to, I'm going to change this and say, hey, less than $1,000, I'm going to categorize this differently. And once again, I cannot type today. Um, so equipment repairs. And I'll save that. And so now I've got a couple of different rules going on. And I can reorganize these to prioritize them as I'm going through. Um, so if you have a big long list, it's going to prioritize the rules that are towards the top. And now I've got different rules kind of applied for this. And I could choose these and add them in because I like that. And then address my other things. Um, hey, you know, so going through. What, what's going on? I'm do, sorry. Do you... Do you 
Do you not need to choose a, a payee? So when that goes in the register, it, VA rental, like what will be the payee? Will that be blank or? Um, you know, in that in that case, it will be blank. So, you know, if I didn't want to classify it to a payee, I don't have to. But okay. yeah, you kind of. I suppose it depends on the type of rule you're creating and whether you want it tied to a specific customer, or specific vendor. But you know, as I'm adding these through, if I don't want a rental to be on my vendor list, I don't have to have it be. If it's just a an expense that I have, maybe it's the only time I'm ever going to use them. Oh, you yeah. know, I don't That's I don't have to idea. assign that in. That's a great idea because we don't really have another names list in QBO, so maybe just not putting a payee would be quote unquote, you know. Exactly. I mean, as long as it's exactly. in the description, right? And I think it's it's moved to the memo field, so at least you would have the quote unquote payee as far as the bank's concerned, but it doesn't have to be on your vendor list. That's a great idea. Awesome. Yeah. Um, the the other thing, and I'm gonna open up, and it looks like it kicked me out. So let me just open myself back up over here. Um, I'm going to show a list of rules just to kind of talk a little bit about ones that you can create. And I know we're coming up towards the end, so I'm going to try and be quick here. I'm just going to, all right, so those who haven't gotten new QuickBooks line, online accountant aren't going to like me because I'm going to go into it right now. <laughs> but this is what it'll look like when you, when you have it. Um, I'm going to jump into one of my clients and just show a list of rules that I already have and talk about what some of those capabilities are and ways that I've seen people use this recently. So again, I'll go to transactions and banking and into my manage rules and here I've got a whole list of them that I've made. One really cool thing that you can do if you've created a bunch of rules um, is you can export them and then import the file uh, into a different account. So if you're uh, an accountant that's got a lot of different clients or if you're like a franchise with multiple QBO files for locations, you can bring in the different rules. And it, when you do that, it's going to let you pick and choose which ones you want. So if, if half the list doesn't really apply to the business, you'll be able to exclude those. And then it has you map them to the chart of accounts. So super useful, super awesome to um, kind of not reinvent the wheel each time that you're setting this up. Um, so a couple couple types of rules that I've seen people make recently that I think are pretty cool. Uh, one of them is for what I talked about before, transfers. Um, we can create a rule for transfer that says anytime it's Chase and the bank text says thank you, I know that that is my credit card payment. So I can have it automatically go to my credit card liability account. Um, another thing I've seen people do is like memberships, dues and subscriptions. So I shop at Costco for my business. I have my $55 a month that I spend for my membership. So I could say when the amount equals 55, that's my subscription. Um, and in, in this account, I've got class turned on, so I can say that's overhead or whatever. Um, but then when it's not that exact amount, it's something else I've done at Costco. So I can categorize my you know purchases at Costco totally differently than what I'm doing for this exact $55 that's coming through. Um, another thing is like rentals uh, or doing rent. Um, so like if I have an office and I, I've rented it out and I have that expense and I know that a certain dollar amount of, of what I've paid is for rent, some of it's garbage, some of it's utilities, I can use that dollar amount split to um, divide that up. Same type of thing works for percentages. You know, I can change this to percents if there's certain things that I know get broken down that way. Um, so money in, you know, I might uh, set things up for like a, a referral bonus or, or some sort of transaction that I have coming in. Um, again, if I've got location tracking turned on, I can break it down by location as well. So different spending in different locations might, might work differently even if it's coming out of the same bank account. Um, and then let's see, this last I won't go through all of these, but lots of, lots of different stuff. So be creative. Think outside the box. There's so many ways to utilize rules. Um, I know that when something says iTunes app or Apple, their little abbreviation in the bank text, it's, it's a software thing. It's an app you know, that I bought through iTunes or whatever. I can set up a lot of different 
run a lot of different things to automate this. Um, that is super. That that's about it. I uh, yeah. anything. I I'm right on the on the dot for uh, 8:30. So. No, it's it's awesome, and and that's pretty much the most thorough uh, bank feed and QBO training I've ever seen. That was just very <laughs> awesome. exciting. And, yeah. and I love all the the rules. Um, I wish I had a cool file like that. Maybe I, you can just invite me to your your file because importing the the rules must be very important across multiple company files for your clients that have similar needs. Uh, so that's awesome. Yeah, that was really really good. Yeah, that's killer. And I'm actually going to uh, cut that up tomorrow and just kind of uh, splice <laughs> and out. Don't abuse it. Well, no, no. I mean, I mean, from a producing standpoint, right. use Camtasia to chop out Valerie's section and, and take out right. uh, some of the positive things and try to get it to a nice, concise. Uh, they'll probably get it to 30 or 40 minutes and just share that out. That that's going to be great. Cool. Yeah, if, you want me to, if you want me to re redo it or, or no, no. You know, clean up no, certain no, this, parts, this was the one perfect. thing that I didn't get a chance to go into because I it mm -hmm. was kind of a, another rabbit hole and we ran out of time. I was going to talk about a couple of, of common like errors and things that run people run into. I'm just going to leave on this point for for the sure. sake of support. If yeah. you do have an error message, try doing a manual update first and don't quickly jump to to disconnect the account. Um, and on those little cards that I showed, I'm not going to share out again, but right. if you click in the pencil, you can edit yeah. the sign-on information. The most common thing people run into is they change their user ID and password at the bank, um, and they didn't update it in oh, QuickBooks Online. So you can Online. edit that so right that, there without reconnecting. That is sweet. Those are my kind of two big things, disconnect right. and reconnect. Not right. always the way to solve a bank error. So, um, you know, try, try manually updating and, and check to make sure you can sign into the bank. Uh, first, before you go freaking out. So no, that's cool. That's great. Um, well, Valerie, thanks so much for taking tonight uh, your time tonight for this demo. It was just super. And you know, I want to make sure you can get to your Blackhawks game, etc. <laughs> which well, thank happens. you for having me. Second period. Yeah. Thanks a lot again. And Don, Stacy, anything last for Valerie or myself or for tonight? I think Stacy left, but I want to yeah. say that I love. Ariel. Um, I'm not calling her by her, you know, land name, yeah. I'll call it. <laughs> but we really do appreciate you coming in and what you have showed us is priceless and we are all still learning so much, like all the time about QBO. And the bank feeds is such a big bonus to accounting, right? And so the automation for our clients and so much thank you so much for coming to the show. And you are welcome anytime, <laughs> all the time, seriously. Careful with that offer. I might come back next week. Like, hey, Woody, can I show something else? <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's killer. I mean, it's so deep. Absolutely. It's such a deep dive. That was awesome to see. Yeah, good stuff. So, um, all right. Well, thanks again, Valerie. Thanks, Stacy. Thanks, Don. And we'll see all you guys uh, next week, next Tuesday, same time. QB show out. Rock Thank on. You. Take care. Bye-bye. Valerie. Ariel. Can't call it out. Throw away thumb drives, no attachments Get the files anywhere when you're permitted access What's the matter? Brush it with the hassle Jump up in the cloud and join us in the castle Higher up in the cloud